What's up guys and welcome back. Today is all about swapping out the spark plugs on this motorcycle. I'm sure you've looked at your manual and you know you need to be doing this at 8,000 miles. And yes, my motorcycle is over 8,000 miles and many of you have asked for this video. So today we're gonna do exactly that. Now definitely there's more to do at 8,000 miles than just spark plug changing. And it's not always necessarily that you need to do it but they are fairly expensive. And of course, I'll link them down below if you wanna buy a set. We'll go through the process of how to get to them, how to get them out, checking them out, and reinstalling the new ones. So let's get it started. Anything will pop these little guys out. They're pretty easy to do. If you've watched any of my videos, you've probably seen all this entirely too many times. <laughs> Two five millimeters under the seat here, and that's what holds this main seat in. Those two out, we can just pull the seat up and out. So we'll start with this pop pin here, get it out of the way. Of course, I'll do it on both sides here. And you can see I have different pins. The more you end up taking apart your bike, <laughs> the more you're gonna end up breaking stuff. I'll put a link down to these pins down below because you will be breaking some of these. Five millimeter. Over on this side up front here, we have a four mil. This mine are black, and I'll link this video up top if you don't know why. Uh, it's actually pretty neat. We'll grab this other one on this side. So we're just gonna do both of these at the same time because we know we want them all off anyway. And then underneath here, we do have more of these Phillips head pop that need to be popped out. This guy's in there pretty good. There we go, we got that one out. We got one more pop pin under here to get out on this side. These should be the last two bolts and they're just holding this plastic fairing into the fuel tank here. So we'll take this guy out, the one on the other side here as well. Pop this guy out of place, which there are three of these little protruding edges here that are going into these rubber dammits here. Same on this side, we just pull one, pull two, there's the other one. And these ones are notorious for falling back in. Another four mil down here, another four mil here. Down in here, we have one, two, take those two out. Then we have this pop pin here on the front fairing. Take it out. From here, we can slide forward and pretty much just lift up and out. We'll get this one out. Should be our last bolt for this side. And just pop this guy off another rubber piece holding that in. The same over on this side. Got a four mil down here to get out. One up here this pop pin here on the fuel tank and two more of these little pop pins here. Push them in, pull them out. Now we can slide forward, lift up and bring that piece of plastic right on out of there. And last bolt for fairing removal. And we are ready to remove the fuel tank. We are finally at fuel tank removal, which is gonna start off with these two five millimeters. Back over on this side, we have these two to remove. And under the fuel tank here, we have a 12 millimeter that needs to come out. And we can just pull that guy right on out of there. So now the tank can completely come off minus some electrical and that fuel line. So now that we're up under here, you can see we need to push this little tab here on our electrical and pull the plug off. The next thing is our fuel. Now our fuel is kind of a two stage to get it off here. So what we need to do to this thing is slide this off and then there's also a tab on the bottom and a tab on the top. So what I'm gonna do is use these which are a pair of pliers that's for taking off hose. This is going to allow me to get and push both of those tabs down so that I could pull off the fuel line like so. I'll link these down below. Otherwise, maybe two screwdrivers will help you get that off. That might be feasible as well. And on the right hand side there, you could see we have two more hose clamps, which are vent lines for the fuel tank. We need to get those off of there. It's difficult to record in there, but you can see that I'm able with my fingers to squeeze those little metal clamps and run them down or run them up off. And then you just pull out those two vent lines. Quite difficult to record, but it really isn't that difficult to do. So I have both those vent lines removed. All right, one step closer to them spark plugs. All right guys, so the next thing we need to do is there's a plastic tray with some electrical wires and some relays that are essentially in the way. So we need to take away this plastic piece here and disconnect a lot of these. Attempt to slide this connector off, which is good and tight in there. 
Just got to finagle it a little bit. Using some good old trusty picks to just kind of get under the lever there and pull it up. There we go. One of the zip ties we're going to have to cut, besides just kind of sliding these relays up and pulling them off, is going to be this zip tie for the throttle cables, which is not bad. We can easily replace a zip tie. Pop that guy off there. Now our throttle cables are free from this little plastic bracket. So right in here behind these throttle cables is that little 10 mil that we need to take off. So we'll get that guy loose. And on this side, we have this one here. Don't want to lose our little spacers that go into plastic. There's the other spacer from the front. Don't lose those. Now with these relays out of the way, yeah, there's going to be some finagling here because this tray is under this whole wiring harness and there's still another item attached to this wiring harness. The good part is this plug that is on the bottom of this tray is all thread based. We should be able to use a normal trim tool to pry that off, which definitely makes things a lot easier when we're just trying to kind of weasel stuff like this out of play. As you can see, all these harnesses are attached to this tray. So there's one, there's another one. You can just squeeze those and pop them right off the tray. Pretty easy to do. There we go. We've got most of these unplugged. It looks like we are going to have to unplug this series here of one, two, three, four, five wires. And that'll just leave this main harness piece left for us to kind of push out of the way to make it easier to get at it. I would assume this job would cost quite a bit of money to do just in simple Frustration of work getting to your spark plugs. There is a spark plug, ladies and gentlemen. Now you can see this is still a push down style to remove the electrical here. So we're just gonna push down, slide that guy right on off of there. At that point, you can spin it pretty well and you can just kind of pull it right off the plug there. So before I remove the spark plug, as all this stuff that is potentially dropping into it, I'm going to go ahead and use an air compressor here just to kind of clean out the hole before we remove it. So what we're going to need is a 14 millimeter spark plug socket. I will link those down below for you guys. It is a little abnormal size and definitely using a long extension is very helpful. There are a ton of threads on this socket or this spark plug. So there it is. Not looking terrible. What's interesting to me is the fact that it's firing past the boot. Alrighty guys, next step is spark plug gap. Go ahead and gap the new one. And if you're looking at the actual manual here, it's a 0.8 or 0.9 millimeter or a 0.031 to 0.035 inches. Now I do have an old school, you know, one you'd use on a car. And let me tell you, it doesn't go big enough, which is really annoying. And I had another one of these and it didn't go big enough. So I actually had to go out and buy one of these right now. So I will link this down below uh, because that is kind of annoying when we're trying to do this to try and figure out what we actually need for gap. And having a tool like this is cool because this is what actually will bend and make your gap what you want. And uh, just a straight up feeler gauge like this is good enough for just checking. So this is a 0.889, so very close to nine, right? So it should go in there like it does. And it's very tight, which is cool. We want that. So it almost appears to me like these are gapped from the factory. So this or for, for the R7. So this one is a 0.813. So almost the bottom line and it goes in there pretty dang easily. So I would say the spark plug is already perfect. At least this one for the gap. The R7 needs. So that goes in there real easy for the 0.813. 
and for almost at the top of the scale, which is a 0.889, we go in, but it is nice and tight. So I would say these are perfect. We don't need to gap them. We don't need to mess with them. They are ready to go in, which is awesome. But good to know, because you never know where you buy your plugs from and whether or not they're gapped for what they're so intended for. So now we can install our first plug. We're just going to stick it in the socket like so, and you can tell it won't fall out, which is cool. Go ahead and get it down in there. Might have to move some stuff because you want to not strip this thing out. You want it to go in perfectly. If you strip this out, you might as well call it good. You screwed. So there we go. We're going in pretty easily. We're all the way down at the bottom and that was all done by hand. For torque spec, we are going to do foot pounds and 9.6. So I'm going to do a 10 foot pound on it. I think that'll be just fine. which is probably almost nothing. So there we go. Always take the time to wipe things off and clean them off. Always clean everything off before you reinstall it. And we will be using some dielectric grease here. We're just gonna put a little squirt on in the center there like that. A little sticker on in here. You can hear all those little pop, 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 pop. Put some good, good, pretty good pressure on there and slide it over. Before we reattach that, we are gonna get the other plug off so that we have a little extra room in there. Go figure, the camera shut off, but all I've done at this point is take off the second, wire, the second plug for the other spark plug there. And the issue I'm having right now is the ABS control module is sitting on a bracket that is just above the spark plug. And the problem is, is I can't get enough force with my fingers to pop it out. So we're gonna drop these two little 10 mil bolts here. There's two of them. We don't wanna drop them, but there's one of them. All right, so we've removed those two nuts on the other side. If we could just shift this guy just a little bit, we would be good to go. We've got another, looks like four mil bolt up top here to take out. Hopefully this will be enough just to kind of weasel that bracket, because that's the only thing that really matters. So there we go, we got that little play now. On the lower portion of the brake here, we do have this pop pin. It's pretty easy to do. That'll give us a little release of pressure here. Now that we have all this loosened up, I'm at least able to get my left hand past the control module and I'm able to pull it up. We are good to go to get that spark out. I'm a dirty cheater. And there is our second plug. We'll go straight into just putting this guy in. It's gotta be done by fingers, guys. Don't cross thread these things. I couldn't imagine how much fun that would be to fix. There we go. Tight by finger. Same torque spec of 9.6. I will be putting 10 on there. Because this one is so much harder to get at, I'm gonna go ahead and put some dielectric grease in here now on that and inside the boot. All right, I'll go ahead and slide her on back in there. Definitely helpful having the control module able to move like that. We just gotta push straight down on it. You can feel it clicking in place. I can feel it run all the way down. I know it's hard to see, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy back in. Go figure, lost you guys on camera again, but I did put dielectric grease in that connector and plug it back in. There we go. So there's that. That's back in. We have this uh, four millimeter bolt that we took out that was holding the ABS lines to the frame, this little bracket. We got that back in play. We make sure all these lines are still lined up the way they're supposed to be. We got this plastic piece down here to put back in, that little pop pin. So we'll go ahead and pop it out. Make sure all this lines up, pop it in. There's our lines are back in play. We pulled this four mil out. 
So we'll put it back in. Make sure all four of these little flanges line in there. Pop the Phillips back in. Back over on this side, we had those two 10 millimeter nuts that we have to put on the secondary tray that's for holding that ABS control module in. Frustrating to get those on. Ha! <laughs> Got super lucky, one is already on. The other one is on. There's one. And there's the other one. And now for all the boring part. Weasel all this stuff back together. This blue one right here is the lowest one, so I'm gonna plug it in first so that we kind of work our way up. So there's that one. Get this guy. Get this guy. This guy and the two white ones that were technically at the bottom. So I'm gonna weasel this white one down and around and plug it in. If I remember correctly, this one, yep. The first one that went here, this one went there on the tray. This last one went here on the tray. These guys plugged directly in that one there this one here I am forgetting one we need, I need to unplug this black guy Gotta undo this guy real quick because our throttle cables were on top of all of this in fact they were all the way up inside this tray like that now we can route that black one Plug it back into the tray, plug it back in. And now is where we try and weasel that guy back under all the harnesses, which were actually worked out really well. This went on top. This is actually coming together quite easily, actually. You can plug in one of these relays, you just slide them on top. Here's the other one, just kind of slide it on top. Here's this gray one down here. Putting our zip tie in, we definitely want to bind our throttle cables, so it's a pretty easy loop to just run a zip tie through there. The loop's already there for us, which is cool. We do have this guy down here. You can see the hole in there. And you can just push this guy right back in there like that and cut our zip tie. Two more bolts that we got to put in there. Now, if you remember, there was a little metal spacer there. And we'll just tighten that guy back down. Doesn't need a lot, it's all plastic pieces. And then below the tray there, I'm gonna put the spacer in first. Try and bend this throttle cable slightly, just a little bit. So I line that spacer in there, drop the bolt in, go by hand. Make sure I have my threads. Now uh, we're going in. All right. All right, we're officially at putting the fuel tank back on. Get my rag out of my intake there. All right, set that fuel tank back on there. Now with your fingers, which is really difficult to show you on video, so I'm just gonna do it. Put your fuel vent lines back on. Now that we got the fuel tank back on, we just need to plug in those two vent lines, which is quite difficult to do, obviously, to video, but you can weasel your hands in here, get them plugged in, and work that line right back up on top of there. And I've found if I can get my other hand and use a fingernail, you can easily push those back up in there. All right, so it's a little difficult to see back up in there, but we have the vent lines back on. The next thing to do is to plug in our electrical connector and you can see our fuel here, it's leaking a little bit, so I'm gonna hurry up on it, but make sure that this plastic piece is pushed out. You'll feel it pop all the way on there when you apply some pressure on it, Off. There we go, we pop the plastic back into place, and now you should be able to tell you can't pull it back off, so it's holding on there pretty strong. So I'm gonna just set the tank back down and make sure that it's on its rails like it's supposed to be. Now technically at this point, everything is good and plugged back in. So before I go any farther, what I'm gonna do is 
put our key back in, cycle the fuel pump to make sure that we're pushing fuel through. I'm going to do it a couple times. and see if she starts up for us. No check engine lights or anything, so we are good to go. So the first thing I'm gonna go with is that long bolt that runs through the front of our fuel tank, and it is a 12 millimeter. Like I try to do with everything I'm putting back together is do it by hand to make sure I'm having no issues getting threads. And you can feel it on the other side with your finger. It's threaded in, we're good to go. Don't tighten it. We still need to be able to move the fuel tank around just a little bit to line up these bolts here on the side. Two on each side, and you can tell by looking at them that they're not lined up. So that is why we're leaving stuff loose because we can move our fuel tank around just a little bit so that we can line these bolts up, do it by hand to make sure we're not stripping these out. And you could feel when it grabs the right threads. So there's one, here's the other one going in pretty easily. And we're gonna leave them loose because this side's gonna have the same kind of issue where we're gonna have to kind of line it up. Make sure we're getting those threads going in by hand nicely. If you're having a hard time, just move the fuel tank around a little bit and get them going. All right, now I'm gonna tighten these down. I'm not gonna give them a ton of pressure, just enough. Just like a little, maybe quarter turn once I get them in there, should be enough. Not even that. Tighten these two back down on this side. And so we definitely don't have to kill these things. And then we'll tighten down our 12 millimeter on the front of the tank here. Same thing, we don't have to overdo this at all. So I say that's about does it guys. There's no reason for me to show you how to put all these fairings back on. I think you've done it or watched enough of my videos to probably know how to do this again. If not, I'll link a vid up here where I have taken all this apart so that if you want the step-by-step -step how to reinstall it, you can watch that as well. But thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I know a lot of you have asked for the spark plug replacement. There it is. Hopefully this works out for you guys. Um, I would say take the extra time to make sure that you get all this electrical done right. Make sure everything's plugged back in before you start putting the fuel tank back on. And then of course, once you get all the fuel hooked back up and everything's plugged back in, Definitely test it to make sure everything's working properly before you finish putting all your fairings on and you have to go back in for another connector that you didn't hit. So like I said, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next week. Bye.